Well, how do that, chums? Does I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I just want to talk a little bit about No Man's Sky. Yes, I've done another community poll over on my community tab on YouTube. Now, this poll is delving into the award that Hello Games have been nominated for, for the most evolving game. They're up against some stiff competition, people. So let's jump on over to the Tinter Web and let me show you what's going on over there, people. So, boom! Right out, so No Man's Sky picks up another BAFTA Games Award nomination. We are thrilled to receive yet another nomination for Evolving Game in the BAFTA Awards at the Game Awards 2024. Okay, so the, what they're up against is Cyberpunk 2077. Now, they brought out Phantom Liberty, which is a freaking amazing sort of DLC, but it's sort of an update that only happened like... A, it took ages for that DLC to come out. So is it an always evolving game? But is that what this award is for? Or is it just the most evolving game? It's hard to say. You know, the Final Fantasy Online, yet again, that's always getting some kind of updates. It gets a couple a year. Fortnite always getting updates. Fortnite is always evolving. They're always adding something new in there. I can see why Fortnite is amongst those, definitely. Forza Horizon 5, I don't know much about Forza Horizon, to be honest. I can't really overly comment there. Genshin Impact, it's a game I've picked up and played. I've done a review on it, but it's not something that I've actually kept tabs on. So I don't know how much that's evolved. So I only really know about the three or four titles in this actual lineup. No Man's Sky, I would say, gets just as many updates almost as Fortnite. you know they happen pretty much seasonal we usually get about four large updates each year usually with an expedition with it we are spoiled like freaking spoiled gats over inside of the no man's sky community so i honestly think hello games needs to be in this lineup because out of all of these titles they're getting pretty darn beefy updates and not only updates they're freaking free they're kind of dlc in size you know so i Hats off to Hello Games. They freaking deserve to be in this lineup. And well done for getting your nomination. It's freaking great. And I hope you win it. I honestly do. And also, we all know that in the Game Awards last year is where they announced Light No Fire. We also heard Sean of the Murrays talk a little bit on stage about what his future aspirations are when it comes to updates for both of these titles in a roundabout way. Because we've seen quite a lot of games hit their 10th anniversary, their 10 year milestone, we're seeing it happen right across the board. In fact, Dragon's Dogma, its 10th year anniversary happened, they launched Dragon's Dogma 2. There's a lot of games companies out there that are doing anniversary editions to mark that 10 year milestone. And I think that's something that Shaun of the Murrays wants to do. So let me just jump on over and I'll play you that segment from the Game Awards last year. Okay, peeps, let's hit play on this. Love it, still really enjoy it, but what people don't know is that for the last five years, we've been working on something new. Oh. Uh, another game. Yeah, something very different, something maybe more ambitious. Um, you know, for... Uh... Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a bit about it, Sean. Uh, well, for No Man's Sky, we generated a whole universe of kind of sparse, alien-looking planets, and that wasn't easy, you know, it was hard, but there is something that's much harder that we wanted to do. Uh, for our new game, we wanted to create an Earth, um, you know, something as varied, a planet that is as varied as a universe, something bigger than Earth, something with, you know, mountains, real mountains, not video game mountains, but mountains that are miles high, taller than Everest, that when you climb to the top of them and look out, you can see rivers and canyons and continents you know you can see oceans so is this like an open world planet kind of thing yeah i mean the first real open world right something without boundaries uh and we're gonna let everyone play in it together it's you know a place where people can live out their sort of adventures together well we can't wait to uh take a look at it we, we have anything tonight or future or? <laughs> yes yeah, so so we have a trailer, oh. um, and you know, it's quite a small team that's working on us. Yeah. There's about a dozen of us. We're actually, everyone's here. The, the everyone from the team is here. Uh, we're s uh, we're very excited <laughs> to share this. You and I've well, been talking about this one for years. Yeah, we're we're super nervous, you know, but uh, really excited. If you know people like it, 
this is a game I would like to still be updating 10 years from now. All right, so Game Awards 2033. <laughs> We'll be back. But no, uh, let's take a look. This is such an incredible project, and I'm honored that we get to show it off. Should we, should we do it, Sean? Yeah, let's do it. Here we go. Okay. And then it plays the full trailer, you know? But yeah, pretty darn freaking crazy stuff, that. So I honestly think, you know, he says as long as people are playing it, people are liking it, he wants to be updating it 10 years from now. Well, that's the story with No Man's Sky. The community love No Man's Sky. They're still playing it. Hello Games has been updating it. And they've been updating it, you know, on queue pretty much every season, like I mentioned earlier. And I fairly feel sure that No Man's Sky is going to make it to that 10 year limit. So a lot of people are saying that No Man's Sky is dead. I don't think it is. I think, you know, we're eight years in from launch. It launched in 2016. I know that there was videos before that, like the E3 trailers and all that sort of stuff, but I'm going from when it was released, when we got our hands on it. So 10 years from there, 2026, you know, that's when I think Hello Games is going to hit that 10 year milestone, do something special for the 10 year anniversary update of No Man's Sky. Maybe that's when they're going to say, look, this is now a box shipped game. This is this is the final product when we get to 2026. But I'm not going to be having that conversation. Is Hello G is No Man's Sky dead until around that date? Because I can kind of think there's going to be that two year overlap of Light No Fire and No Man's Sky, where Hello Games is going to be supporting both games to see where the community focus moves. Not everybody that likes sci-fi likes fantasy. Not everybody likes fantasy likes sci-fi. I can kind of see people picking up Light No Fire, loving it and saying, well, I wonder if I should give No Man's Sky another try and jumping back and looking at that. I kind of think it's going to be healthy for their actual studio. I don't think No Man's Sky is dead. Sound off in the comments. I might even do a poll on that and do a follow up video just on do you think No Man's Sky is dead? Because I think it's got another two years easy peasy of more shelf life, more DLC, more updates, more rewards like this. And I feel that's going to happen in conjunction with Light No Fire. But anyway, jumping over onto my community tab and I've put out this other poll and we're going to delve into this i'm going to be reading all my thoughts and feelings giving the poll results and then reading all of your responses out there inside of the viewer verse okay chums well let's delve into what this poll is all about hello games and no man's sky has been nominated for the most evolving game for the game awards of 2024 do you feel it has evolved delivered on all of its potential or pre-release promises and expectations has it exceeded in all the areas and are you more than happy? Here is a poll and I plan to make a video and read out the comments. Please keep them snappy and easy to read. Well people, this is that video! I guess it is my feelings. There we go, and delve into this bit now. It's my feelings. Every rock, cloud, fauna, flora, atom is procedural. We see this flash up in the trailers. Still, it isn't at that level. Feels very sculpted and procedurally placed, not generated. The variety is limited and bland. One example, every system has, has only one ringed planet, making them less special and a pattern you spot right away. The Pix Biomes also does this. We'll get to that in a moment. I've got a, another tab up there. Variety for me has evolved slightly when Origins released, but I st this still feels light miles away from the promise prior to release that planets would be super biomes not fixed and created by the placement of the sun, etc. Okay, so where this comes from is from the art direction back in 2015. Let me just play you this little snippet quickly because it makes more relevance. Here we go more like your American Nevada deserts with your cacti and your harsh spiky terrain. Swamp planets, Dagobah, they're always good. But what we found by having, by creating those sort of biomes, those separate biomes that you'd, human beings are really, really good at spotting patterns. So you'd fly down to a planet and it would be a swamp planet and you'd go, oh, it's a swamp planet. And, and instantly that breaks this illusion and you just realize what's going on behind the scenes. And the thing with video game artwork is so much of what we do is an illusion. Like, you know, especially linear games where you can look out a window and you can see a mountain in the distance, but 
we all know that you know you can't get to that mountain and as artists work in the industry everything we do is you know where it's all pretend and we don't want anybody to see behind the scenes and having those separate biomes it absolutely revealed that and our game is so it's incredibly important that you don't get that sense of illusion so what we ended up doing was creating what I call a super biome which is a biome which covers all those biomes in one fell swoop and it's oh, what's a good way of explaining if you imagine a uh, if you've ever used like a terrain generation tool where you'll have diff lots of different sliders that control different things like spikiness of mountains, trees. And we have that, but we have hundreds of different sliders and we have min and max values for all those different sliders, but I don't have to go into every planet and manually move those sliders. What happens is when a planet is terraformed, those sliders are moved to different positions. Now, originally those positions were random, but what we found really interesting is if you start to link those sliders to things within the universe like distance from a sun, whether the planet has a moon or not, then the results start to become believable and it, you start to spot patterns, but it's patterns that you accept because you start to realize that, oh, this planet's really close to the sun, so the foliage is either going to be non-existent or it's going to be, it's just not going to be very green. Okay, so there we go. That's where he explains the super biomes, rather than having patterns inside of the game. Things that humans will spot as patterns. And he makes, makes out that it's extremely important to the team. We never did actually fully understand or get some sort of answer as to why they decided to move back to fixed biomes. Anyway, let me continue reading. Okay. I feel most of what we see as evolution has moved the game away from the infinite universe to a pattern-based, well-generated feel like an adult version of Minecraft now. Now, in that video that I just played from GDC, Grant Duncan, the art director, the chappy on stage talking there, actually talked just prior to that segment about how biomes are the way that Minecraft operates. So I was just parroting what they, they had actually said at the Hello Game studio in the way that they didn't want to create No Man's Sky. They didn't want fixed biomes. If you want to listen to that full interview, that full presentation by Grant Duncan, it's extremely interesting. And I thoroughly recommend it. I put a link up there. Go hit that one up. Give that a watch. More of a devolution from the original vision, but an evolution that would appear to gamers like that lack patterns, less exploration, and more in finding the perfect planet to call home and build a base. Which, to be honest, I really enjoyed that when they actually rolled out, you know, Foundations Update, where you can actually start building your bases and Pathfinder and all that good stuff in the early days. Yeah, I was looking for that perfect planet. I was looking for a very Earth-like planet. Now, they, they still didn't really move to biomes until they introduced a lot of the planters and then sort of different sorts of plants that you get from the biomes. They still did have some sort of approach to having very random-esque worlds, but you would land on quite a lot of planets and not find any life there at all. You'd touch down, find, jump out your ship, scan, find that there was no fauna or flora, get back in your ship and fly to one that did. And it did feel like a jaunt to find the perfect planet. It was a very different game back then. And the evolution away from that, I feel, has got a lot of pros and cons to it. But anyway, here we go. Some like this evolution, others not so much. And I kind of sit somewhere in between the two, because I love all this new stuff, but I also love some of the promise that was in that art direction there. And I really do hope there's a way that they can find some middle ground to bring some of that procedural ideas and that greatness into game. I love the game at launch, and I love it now. Yeah, it's a very weird one for me. I just think the way that it's evolved is away from the original vision. I hope to see some of the procedural engine improved on in the next few years, more variety and perhaps more community driven content in game. And I hope the evolution to come isn't more cosmetic, low depth, low bring back ability, shallow barely content or core engine fluff. Hope this year is a big year for actual depth and meat on the bones content. The bones are there, the foundations are great, and I hope Hello Games manages to deliver. They did say it was going to be a big year 
for No Man's Sky. And I honestly do think they're going to start sticking a lot more meat on those bones or building upon those foundations and making everything super califragilistic, expialidocious. Heck yes. Anyways, so here you go. So this was more about the actual award and how people feel about them getting that award. And 6% uh, said no. Infinite variety is still undelivered and subpar. 6%. So, so, elements are still lacking depth and polish. 16% hit that one up. And, yeah, Steam Review shows it's getting there. The award is deserved. Yeah, so before, you know, Hello Games' actual review on Steam was less than positive, really, and now it's moved up massively. In fact, I'll bring up the actual Steam sort of reviews in a second. Yes, it's amazing, and it's everything I could want and more. 24% of people hit that. And then 8% said, I agree with you, I just want to see the poll results as well. So, where I sit with this is it's a little bit, I do think that they deserve the freaking reward. Heck yeah. So, I'm kind of in between here and here. That's kind of where I sit, somewhere around there. Yeah? Okie pokey. Anyway, let's have a look at the Steam sort of reviews before I get onto your comments. Okay, so, you know, before it was like, you know, mostly positive, but now it's moved up to ve very positive in review status down here. You can see it here. And that's taken a long time for it to slowly progress and get to that point, you know. And it, it's pretty darn freaking awesome that it has managed to get to that point. There we are. So, yeah, mostly positive. And it, it's taken a while for that improvement in reviews. Now, I would say that the reason that it started to improve in reviews is because they're given more when it comes to what people expect from a video game, what gamers expect from a video game. Uh, going exploring, landing on planets to try and find life, to then take off and go to the next one. People might not like that sort of loop, how it was when it first launched. Now that you've got combat with Sentinels, you've got different sorts of way of earning loots or getting modules or doing derelict freighter raids or building a base, it's a far wider scoping of a sci-fi game. There's people out there that were going to love the trade aspect. And now that Hello Games are putting guilds and trade surges and things like that, it's going to appeal to more people that like that sort of trade ability inside of game. So every single update they're doing is in bringing in more people that wanted that more fleshed out experience. It's that meat on the bones. The meat on the bones for trade has now started to be added. Could it go a couple of notches greater? Yes, it probably could. And if that happens, it's going to bring more people that are into that sort of EVE Online experience with trade, perhaps coming over to No Man's Sky, giving it a look. You know, anyways, let's go into your comments and let's see what you guys in the viewer verse have had to say upon this poll. So here we go. I've had, I have pinned one in this instance because I thoroughly agree with it. Okay, so this is Chuckles, 9767. Compared to many games that developed or basically play the nerf buff game with the stats and call that progress, No Man's Sky has evolved. Do some wish they focus more, e.g. on finishing evolutions? Yes. Are some happy with the variety of evolutions, even though there are dead ends? Yes. Compared to other games, No Man's Sky is clear standout. Yes. Yeah, I agree with all of that. Personally, when they spent ages doing combat stuff, I was excited, but that comparatively not a great combat, e.g. it's not Doom and it's not big ship combat, but it's, it's not like elite, you know, it's far superior elite, yeah. Took the evolutions from other departments, now makes me sad. The time cost doing these combat updates meant building, world building and exploration got neglected is now humorously not that great to me anymore. So basically what Chuckles is saying is the amount of time that they put into some areas like combat, that if they put that focus onto maybe evolving the variety, where would the game be now? It could be a lot more, a lot more variety there. Now, because Hello Games is quite a small team, they have to place their focus where they feel the focus needs to go. And they listen to their community. And because the community was saying, well, there's no challenge, there's no end game content, well, there's, you know, where's the combat? They added some of that in. So they're trying to bring in more and more people, as I was speaking earlier about the trade stuff, with a big year of combat. They delivered Sentinel, Outlaws, all sorts of stuff to do with pirates and Sentinel upgrades, even a new Sentinel sort of hive mind, the sort of corrupted Sentinel, the purple ones, the spider tanks. 
a heck of a lot of stuff went into combat, even like into the, how the haptic feedback was on your actual weapons and how they actually fire and all that sort of shenanigans and brought in a couple of new modules. I really liked all that stuff. I feel that that did add another dimension to play. You know, it does. But did combat draw in more players, money, more updates? Yes, I think so. Probably more than exploring and crafting wood. Perhaps, yes, because everybody knew that that's what the core of No Man's Sky was, as an exploration space game. If you ask somebody on the street, what's No Man's Sky? That's probably how they would answer. You know, so yeah, I kind of agree. As I get older, I'm getting more understanding of the um, McDonaldization of society. The masses want bland, cheap conformity, even at the cost of local community wealth. Who wants a delicious locally made burger from mostly local ingredients when MACDs can devil a cheaper cardboard in the teeth of ta in, in tenth of time? Not me, but I'm so weird. <laughs> to be honest, for me, yeah, I, I would grab a McDonald's burger if I haven't got too much time, you know. But yeah, I would rather get a gourmet burger, but do I want to spend ten times the price? It's a treat. It's a treat. It's not an everyday thing. Anyway. I agree, No Man's Sky has its own charm at launch and the first few years, but that was swapped out for more formalities and what gamers know, set biomes and patterns. You know, people don't want to gallivant around for like two hours to find a certain element by random chance of landing on planets. They want to be able to hit up a scanner, see, oh, look, look, there's a frost world right there. I'm going there to get that element that I want, the frost crystal or whatever. You know, landing on planets, hoping that you've just landed on a frost biome to get your frost items wasn't all that great. But then if the Hello Games did build the universe like they said they were going to, you'd just go to the planet that's the furthest away from the freaking sun. And there was a good chance it would be freaking frost, you know. But anyways, I digress. Cool. We got a lot on trade-off. Base building, bike beats, freighters, capital ships and ship slots and multiple slots and far, far more. Yeah, they've just added ship customization in now. This is another thing that the community has been asking for for some time, including myself. All of these things have brought in more players. It's been good for Hello Games and reviews prove that. And they deserve the award nomination. 100%. Heck yes. The game feels like it's evolved a little of what Hello Games' vision was to what player shifting expectations are. And that's an important thing. You know, the actual people that picked up No Man's Sky on day one are now probably quite a small fraction of people that are still playing now compared to the new players coming in. A lot of the new players coming in didn't see any of that GDC 2015. They probably didn't even see the E3 trailer. They've seen recent trailers, that's drew them in. New aspects of game is what's drew them in. And they don't only care about that pre-release promise and yesteryear and all that sort of stuff. So the actual margin that I'm in where I'm saying I want to see that variety, I want to see the super biomes, I want to see the super formula, I want to see the things that were promised is because I was somebody that pre-ordered this game eight freaking years ago and you know in another two years you know that audience that still has my wishes and desires is probably going to be even smaller so I'm speaking for a smaller and smaller dwindling portion of the community perhaps you know and this poll sort of echoes that you know when you see the results of this poll I feel that quite a lot of the community is new influx of people coming in that have found new draw to come and look at No Man's Sky and it's even like when Starfield came out and we didn't have that seamless travel. I'd imagine quite a lot of the new members of the community have come over from hitting up Starfield, not getting what they thought they were getting, and now they're getting it from No Man's Sky. Anyway, I hope Light No Fire releases in the state that fits Hello Games' vision, and it sticks more to that this time around. Wish No Man's Sky had an origin original vision mode. Hope if the Void or Realm of Glass appears, it's more around the old vision of the game. Loop 19, an echo of the past, an older simulation. Now, I don't think that's too far out of the realms of possibility, considering now that you hit up an echo locator and you see all these echo autophages appearing inside of our reality from a previous reality. Who's to say that whole planets might not spawn in from an older version of the simulation? Maybe if you use the station override, it jumps the station into a parallel dimension of that same system, but it's got different terrain manipulation and assets and all sorts of weirdness from the past. Maybe relic sites are more habitable now and got autophages on them, and they're not such a much of a relic site and buried. They're actually above ground and they're actually bustling metropolises. Who freaking knows? Anyway, Chuckles applies agree 
I wish we could roll some updates back or choose what parts of the updates we wanted and didn't want. Agree to a vision versus customer wants is hard to balance that. Sometimes what the customer wants isn't what they really uh, want. Damn humans! <laughs> and their FOMO. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. It's, it's a bit of a weird one because how you feel things in your head, when you imagine things in your head and then you try to put those ideas into a video on paper and then Hello Games get that. And, is there a certain sense of, you know, Russian nesting dolls or Chinese whispers with it and, and how it actually gets implemented into game isn't quite what you envisaged. But yeah, I mean, I've done countless ideas videos. Some of those have been realized into game, maybe not quite in the same way. Take, for example, my ship customization ideas video. I'll put a link up there, people. Go check that out and see if that's how you kind of feel it's been implemented. I think it's partially been implemented. But, you know, it's just how Hello Games interpret ideas or come up with their own versions of ideas. Okay, so Hollywood T2961. For me, there's no other game I've played as long. I can't stop exploring the world between the biomes, ships, space station, creepy monoliths. So much stuff to see and record uh, cool videos. 100% agree with you there. I mean, you know, I'm still going. I've got over a thousand hours in this. I must admit now, though, I mean, I've just hit up a PC save. If I didn't have it on PC to play through again, would I have played it through on my Xbox? Maybe. That's another platform. Could have done. But if I didn't have my Xbox and PC and I just had the one platform, I would probably be scrappling around right now trying to wonder what to do. I might start a fresh save. I might start playing through as a different character, but it's still the same game no matter what character you choose you know what i mean it, it it does need something more for those people that have been playing for over the 100 hours over the 200 hours you know me i've got thousand hours and there's a lot of people in the same boat as me and i must admit you know i've never played a game as much as this in my entire time of gaming and one game that came close was white knight chronicles i had about 400 hours in that but anyway, Kev B1, 6286, I pre-ordered this game from launch, and it's still my most played game. Other games like Red Dead, GTA Online, and many more have come and gone in my collection, but No Man's Sky keeps me playing. Long may it continue. And yeah, I agree. 100% agree. Even if I wasn't a content creator for No Man's Sky, I would still be playing No Man's Sky and still eagerly awaiting that next update. Every update for No Man's Sky to me feels like Christmas. It's freaking great. It really is. And I'd be lost without it. I love No Man's Sky. Anyway, here we go. Tolstar the King. It's not going to feel fully complete to me until they wrap up the story, which I'm sure they'll do at some point in all other areas. It feels pretty complete. Now, yeah, the lore, the lore has got so many different avenues that they could go with the actual lore. And there's so many different sorts of spikes and turns that they could go on, you know. Anyway, Austin Air Co. has actually replied and put, it's not intended to end. What end is people quit buying it, stop playing it, stop talking about it. As long as there is excitement and enthusiasm, like has Star Trek, the series of movies been around, you think they would keep making those if they weren't making dollars doing so. Man's curiosity with space has existed all my life. Did NASA quit after landing on the moon? Hello Games could drag this story out indefinitely by throwing in new curveballs. Remember the autophages and new to the game? Pirates haven't always been part of the game either. Yet why pirates are compromi compromise of the Gek, Viking, Corvax? We don't go around hunting these specific races, only if they're identified as pirates. And then you know, Tolstar King, yes. But why would they do that when, as much as I hate to say, the, minor the majority of players don't care about the story? I think they'd end it soon, as like they're trying to move on with Light No Fire and give No Man's Sky fans closure. I honestly do think that they will start closing off some of the loops inside of the lore. You know, the endless loops, the, the questions that we all have. You know, where is Ariadne? Is she on board this dark freighter? Is the imposter going to ever do anything evil? Why is she there? Why have they placed a doppelganger on there? Is she there as a spy? Is she trying to take out the anomaly? There's so many things that they could do just on that one quest line itself. And they haven't actually lifted and shifted all that story from the summer lore from a couple of years ago for all the new players to enjoy. And it was freaking epic. They need to bundle that into a story and give it to everyone because Switch players and Mac players ain't got a clue what I'm on about. And I'm sure probably there's a lot of people right now that haven't got a clue what, a clue what I'm on about. If you want to know what I'm on about with the uh, 
the, the summer law where Ariadne became an imposter. I've got a whole playlist. I'll stick it up there for you if I can find it. Lovely jubbly. Tea bags. P.S. I think that Planet Biomes Overhaul is long overdue. After a few hundred hours, they get pretty repetitive. Flowing water and the ability to pick up your bases and move them around would also be a great addition, says Tea bags. I think if they did add in more planetary variety and overhaul the planets maybe using some sort of super slider thing they would have to do that because a lot of people's bases might get ingressed into a mountainside or get you know a terrain all inside of them or whatever so i think they would have to do two the two hand in hand if they were to do that give the ability people to save their bases into their base computer then move the base computer or something or have a favorite list of 10 bases that they can then move and re, re replace down somewhere else i think they could do the two together but it's a lot of work it's a lot of server management as well because the bases sit on you know their bases server or whatever the community servers whereas the discovery servers might be sort of like offset from that i don't really know the actual makeup server side i know they use azure i know that they spin up lots of different virtual instances but yeah hopefully that's something they could do teabags anyway we've got joe in the house hello there joe Cool, yeah. Joe put down an awesome comment on my last video as well. So here we go. I absolutely love the game and have since launch, but I do have a lot of criticism of the game. The past few years, we've been given a lot of graphical updates, cosmetics, new ships and space stations. All of these are rendered beautifully. But all I think about is what if that time was instead spent on creating more assets for existing biomes? The work would do wonders for the game. Think of 15 new Frozen World assets in-game. It would seem like there are now thousands of different new Frozen Worlds. These cosmetic updates are nice, but do nothing to keep me playing for longer than just getting them. Saying, wow, that looks nice, and then usually turning off the game until the next update. Origins got me to start a new save, and the exploration of new planets is what held me in. Another update like this, of just new assets, would go such a long way in keeping players playing. Yes! Now, the thing with when they actually done Origins, they actually said, you know, they've taken a lot of craziness out of No Man's Sky. If you listen to the Origins interview that Sean Murray done with IGN, they actually said that Origins was going to be a new start. And it almost felt that every update then was going to deliver in more assets, more fauna, more flora. I was hoping that they would get any new interns, new people to the team to say, OK, can you create us? 20 assets 50 assets a bit like what you're saying here joe if i was the hello game studio and i was bringing in a new artist or a new developer i would say right we need 50 ideas from you for this biome or that you know and, and then at least then they get to see their stuff appearing game we get to see their stuff in peering game and more variety gets put in but you know what would be even greater than that is if they actually gave the actual player base the community the ability to actually have maybe a bio lab where we can go into a bio lab take elements of different plants put them together splice them put in different spines and create our own sort of weird hybrid plants that we can then put out and terraform on dead planets, maybe terraforming. And also the same with creatures. Maybe if they could introduce an element a bit like Spore, where you can actually create your own creature, how it walks, how it moves, this actual wireframe, make big centipede ones, whatever. You can make your own creatures out of the creature part builder. You know, is this going to be the next thing that people start hitting up on? Yeah, we've got ship customization, but now I want flora and fauna customization. And while you're at it, give us mineral customization. It would be nice to get a lot more community driven tools for us to actually expand the universe, help Hello Games in creating more variety in the universe. And we've got these dead systems, we've got abandoned systems, we've got abandoned stations that when you now fly into them, it says, Welcome home. Could it be that they might add in planet terror for formation? Could they give us the ability to use our wonders catalog for something more than just cataloging things? Could we actually use it as a recipe book to actually build out our terraformed wells? That'd be freaking awesome. Hello games, if you're listening, if that's something that can be done, I mean, I never say never when it comes to Hello Games. A lot of people say to me, Captain Steve, your ideas are crazy. Hello Games could never do it. Well, we said that about ship customization. What did we just get? We've got ship customization. So let's just keep those fingers crossed. I know it might not have been implemented in the same way that a lot of people would have liked, but it's there. It's there. James MC. 
Okay, great game, great community, wouldn't change it for the world. Heck no, James, me neither. I would say, though, that the Hello Games community, like I was saying earlier, is a forever expanding one. And also, what people want from No Man's Sky is changing with that ever-expanding community. Because, like I say, No Man's Sky is now drawing people in for different reasons. And each of those reasons, Hello Games now has to focus on as like a, a prime directive of where they need to actually put updates to keep everybody happy. It must be very difficult for Hello Games to keep those plates spinning and to keep everybody interested. You know, we had almost a whole year of combat updates and we maybe lost people, but we gained new people. And now we've got to keep those people entertained. We have a little bit more of a challenge every now and again. You know what I mean? Anyway, Solid Moon, 82, 66. It has. Uh, now they're working on something we've wanted for a long time. Finally implemented, at least partially. I just hope, I think they mean ship customization there. I hope with Light No Fire and No Man's Sky doesn't get shelved for improvements and development, especially with more content to improve loop quality. Even now, there's not really much to do after reaching the center of the galaxy the first time. You can do everything in one pass and that's it. It's not like you can even go through the quest lines all over again to do things differently and acquire all the titles. Yeah, that's kind of why I spun, spun up a PC save, to be honest. If they made it more worth it to progress to later galaxies beyond Euclid, then there'd definitely be more of a motivation for continuous play rather than surges for different expeditions. One other good thing is that No Man's Sky has released all these updates and improvements for nothing more than the base content for the game itself. But yeah, yep, pretty much agree with everything that you've said there, to be fair, my friend, I guess. Okay, we've got Nemo, Nemo Walton. I love the game and brought it at launch. When it first came out, it was enjoyable, but it didn't hold my attention because it felt like something was missing. But when the updates for the game started to release, I got very hopeful and excited for what could come and what could do with the game. Yeah, to be honest, when it when it launched, I played it. I loved it. I liked it. I played it for a good couple of months. I tried to find an Earth-like planet. But then when I had found it, I couldn't build a base on it because it was before bases were a thing. Then bases came out. I put a base on it. I loved that planet for a while. I played it for a few more months. Then Destiny came out. I gravitated over to Destiny, but No Man's Sky, every update, I was hitting it up and playing it. And it was only when Next dropped and we got the player models and I thought, hold on, I'm going to do a YouTube channel on this. I'm going to be Captain Steve in the verse. And I started a new playthrough and I freaking fell in love with No Man's Sky like no other game on the freaking face of the earth. It's, it, it, it delivered so much. It really did. In 2022, it felt like the game was going in the right direction. All the years prior to 22 felt more foundational than an additive yeah but when 22 rolled out i could tell that there was a switch in the way that the game was developed now the updates in 2022 were still foundational but i could tell how much more focused they were i feel like the game has evolved a lot from release so it does deserve to win yeah 100 and i agree with that too there was a bit of a shift but i feel like only in 2024 have they really started to add meat to the bones this is what I'm saying exactly of No Man's Sky because there's more foundational content to be added. A hundred percent. They need to go over everything that they've done in the last few years and say, right, we need to bottom this out. We need to add more depth or add more meat to the bones. You know, all the foundations are there. We've got all the different nodes now to make this a brilliant sci-fi jaunt and round it all off. At the moment, it's a bit spiky. You know, we need to smooth that out, make it more of a polished thing on top of what we still have the fourth part of the ARG story to drop this year so I feel very strongly about this year being a, a year of end game content to be added to the game again couldn't agree more with that you know and everything is moving towards that all the lore about the void mother about these autophages it all feels like it's building to something bigger and even Shaun of the Murray's with this new quest line the the atlas immortal quest line or whatever where you're going to align yourself to an Atlantid or to the atlas and that's going to have ramifications throughout the rest of your save at the moment it's just a choice it doesn't have any ramifications it doesn't lock you out of anything it doesn't actually align you to a faction not yet anyway you know 
The updates we have get, we get now have been more cohesive and focused than the updates of the past, and it seems likely that whatever part four is for the ARG is going to be big. Yeah, because it's been hinted to be, hasn't it? In the law and by Sean of the Murrays, and by everything that we're seeing, and this ARG, you're quite right. I say all this to sat. This might really be one of the biggest years for No Man's Sky. If it isn't, okay, you're you're on the same page as me. I honestly think all the signs are pointing to a Gib year this year. I think the summer update of this year is going to be 5.0, and I think it's going to bring in autophages properly and maybe make them more realised as an actual race inside of No Man's Sky and also this Void Prime stuff that we've got going on. Anyway, I have a really strong feeling that this content we're going to get this year will be deep and be the type of content that long-time players has been asking for. Well, Hello Games does listen to the community, and I think they can probably see that we are sort of struggling to do things. It's like in every expedition we get now, all the main content creators, we've got Beeble, we've got Zane, we've got Jason Plays, we've got Golden Gag. There's a whole stream of just players, Survival Bob, that just do this sort of survival run. They redo the expedition as quickly as they possibly can, speed run it. They've also got the Survivor, where they've set their own parameters in game for rules that they need to do and can't do. I'd forget those rules in a freaking pin drop. I, I, I'd stuff it up. I really would. You know, I, I get lost in car parks. I, I just haven't got the attention to... S if there was an actual game mode I could hit up where all of their rules were already infused on me and I couldn't actually do those things, perfect. They need to give some of that to the community where you can make your own challenges in games, perhaps, because obviously those guys are enjoying it and there's a lot of people that enjoy watching it. And I would enjoy taking part in it if it was a set freaking rule book, you know? Anyway. Stuff that really fits in the game and keeps players engaged. I think I think handing the reins over to the community might be the way that they start moving updates, but we'll see. Side note, I think that a mega update was meant to signify was the end of the old types of content updates and the start of new types of updates. That's, that's interesting. I mean, the Omega does mean the end, doesn't it? So maybe it was the end of the old content update cycle, because I can't read the patterns anymore. Every single pattern for the last few years has gone out the window this year. It really has. So yeah, I agree. Mega Captain. Hello, Mega Captain. It's Captain Steve here. Salute Monday. I do love the game and everything they've added to it. I do think they are deserving of every award they have won or nominated for. However, the planets are what have been the most lacking in terms of multiple biomes on planets such as polar regions, for example, along with proper rivers, waterfalls, and putting waters on moons. I have put in the least amount of time into exploration because of this. You can scan a planet, land on it, and that's it. You've seen the entire planet, basically. Yeah, kind of what you see in, like, you know, the radius of your ship and what you can see inside a pop is going to be what it's like over the next hill and all sorts of... I agree. I completely agree. Now, on planets, sometimes you get fauna that only spawns in either the north or the south of the planet. So they've actually worked out what's the north and what's the south of the planet. It would be nice if they could at least do dual biomes in some systems. Especially if we do get given the ability, like I mentioned earlier, to terraform a planet. It would be nice if you could choose random uh, regions to that planet and put different biomes into them. I did a whole video on terraforming some time ago, but I don't know how I labelled it because I really struggled to find it. But if I can find it, I'll put it up there on how I would imagine terraforming to work in No Man's Sky. Cool. So we've got Santos here. Hello there, matey. Yes, I talk to him a lot in, in personal messages, things like that. Those are the members of my channel. I do give them my social media details. And you can hit me up on Facebook Messenger or on Twitter or your preferred sort of social platform. And I try to respond to those people that are members, backers of the channel that have my social details within like 24 hours. You know, there's time zones. I do sleep. I'm not immortal. But anyway, I try my best anyway to talk to people. I'd say I'm actually friends with Santos now. Anyway, Eugene. Hello, Eugene. Anyway, I, <laughs> I have been with the game since the beginning. I'm also very familiar with what it takes to continue to successfully upgrade a system from the bare roots outwards, which they have done several times, much to the chagrin of many of us. 
Nevertheless, I feel that they have continuously tried to listen to the user base and in most cases implemented their suggestions in more than a timely manner. You can't turn an ocean liner around in a moment's notice. No, you really can't. Was it one just hit a bridge or something? Anyway, <laughs> there we go. There will always be things that the users want, no matter how much you give them. There is more users than they are programmers. Some of them will never be implemented for a number of reasons. Too long to list here. I personally think they deserve every award they receive. They have stood the test of time and have outrun their com complimentation every time to date. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. You know, when it comes to developing anything, it's it's difficult to actually implement everything that people want. Now, yeah, but at the same time, I do agree again. Hello Games have done their best to implement everything that the community has been sort of, you know, grinding the gears on. Ship customization being one, giant worm like megafauna being two, deeper oceans being three. You could go on for quite some time with this list, you know, capital ships, more ship slots, able to scrap ships. You get what I'm saying? All this sort of stuff is what the actual community have been saying for a long time. And that's why I would say that speculation videos and ideas videos are actually good for the actual game. Because without that sort of stuff happening, we probably wouldn't see a lot of this stuff being implemented. But at the same time, is this stuff being implemented, moving Hello Games' focus from their vision to what people expect to see? There's a little bit of a balance in that, and I think Hello Games are doing a very good job of walking that balance in that and keeping everybody happy because we're seeing that reflected in the Steam reviews. You know, if they weren't doing it in a decent, positive way, those Steam reviews would be going the opposite direction. Think of Elite, you know, the game Elite, Elite Dangerous. That was going in the right direction. They tried to implement boots on the ground that the community had been asking for some time. It actually didn't go as well as what was expected. And then that game started to flop. It's a gamble. Every update that Hello Games is a gamble. And I think that they've done quite good on every update to actually come out of it with more players than losing players. Okay, So... Full credits to Hello Games. If you're watching, salute to Mondo. It can't be easy. I do feel for you. I really do. Midnight Wild Spirit. Almost every hostile plant looks the same. The Venus fly traps. And the plant has a ridiculous big hit box. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> yeah. And can hurt you even if you're not near it. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. The cave spawn plants that look like pulsating boogers that poison you. The game doesn't have enough space canines i want to adopt a dog companion i love the game i hope it continues to grow and evolve into the game it was meant to be or even better yeah well when it comes to like that dog companion idea it would be nice like i was mentioned earlier to have some sort of spore mechanic in there so you can actually build your own creatures and especially if you could then have them as a pet that'd be freaking lovely but yeah the the, when Hello Games first launched No Man's Sky, there was only one hazardous plant. It was the whipping plant. And in one of my videos, I remember saying, I really wish Hello Games would implement some more sort of hazardous flora. They could add in Venus flytrap creaturey ones, or ones that pump up and pop, or even tentacles that wrap out and grab you, and you've got to hit your buttons to escape from them. And it wasn't long after that that they introduced exactly that. I mean, they didn't give the one with tentacles, but they did give us the eyeball in the water that actually sucks you in. You have to hit a button to escape. It was almost it was almost like two months after I made that video, and I was like, are they listening? Have I been tapped? What the fudge is going on? And it's weird how things like that happen. It's like I said, that I really wish that there was a sentinel sort of... <laughs> A dungeon that you could infiltrate, raid, take out all the sentinels, get to a center console and shut down the sentinel activity on extreme sentinel planets because I'd love to just, you know, be able to walk around some of these planets without being bugged by sentinels all the time. And they actually put in sentinel towers that do exactly that. So, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Lord of the Apes. I think they had to come up with new awards because No Man's Sky is redefining gaming. Well, I don't know so much about that. I mean, when you look at the actual games that have been actually nominated, all of these are really good contenders. I mean, I'd say that the award has a good chance to either go to Fortnite 
or maybe even cyberpunk because that phantom liberties update was freaking insanely good and also i'd imagine that the actual studio you know that put out cyberpunk is probably feeling a little bit downtrodden with what they've done and if you look at cyberpunk with some of the latest mods on it trying to tell the difference between cyberpunk and reality it's some of the stuff that's, that, that cyberpunk can do on pc is freaking insane it really is so i don't know about that i think that each of these nominations are probably good nominations i mean i can't speak for forza i can't really speak for genshin impact and final fantasy online although i did play final fantasy online i found that on console trying to navigate the ui oh god it was freaking hell anyway here we go play 617 it's definitely evolved. The question is, did it evolve where it needed to? Personally, I believe that it should evolve more in terms of exploration. This is something that's been echoed by a lot of people here. It's something that I feel quite passionately about as well, Why prepping in various improvements in the other areas, where it seems to have actually been the other way around. Also, many of the changes and additions seem to need more depth to them. That's exactly how I feel. And I feel that this is the year that Hello Games is going to do that. I really hope they are anyway. I mean, what they've done with guilds and what they've done with the trade surges and how things actually operate now inside the stations, when you link that with a trade route as well, you can really sort of gain yourself quite a lot of units as you progress towards the centre of the universe. They just need more reason to go to the centre of the universe. Originally, they said that if you start in the, re the outer regions of the universe, where a lot of the planets are dead, and as you get towards the centre, you're going to come across more and more craziness, awesomeness, giant fauna, reasons to explore. And then when you get to the centre, there's a longing for an answer. And there's and something awesome at the centre. And then that didn't actually happen inside a game. Again, we don't know why they moved from that system to biomes. And we don't understand why they dropped all of that sort of stuff that they mentioned in GDC, the art direction. They talk about all of that in this video. Please watch this video. Cool. Here we go. Narrative. Here we go. I completely agree with you, Steve. I might belong to the minority who appreciate the lonely explorations and the sense of isolation at launch. The old vibe and art style, something I really miss in the unpredictability, especially in the way terrain is generated. I wanted those weird and wicked formations that make absolutely no sense. I don't like the feeling of knowing a planet before I've landed, similar to how you can predict that there's going to be ringed planets in the next undiscovered solar system. 100% agree. And I get it, it's a game is as big as it is. We can't expect every single planet to be outstandingly varied and unpredictable, but please let there be more possibilities and don't do the unnecessary limited some patterns. Heck, just simple things are the possibility of water on moons or frozen planets with a sky not coloured blue. Maybe not every solar system has to contain planets with fauna, etc. And instead of replacing the old terrain generation colours and assets and textures, why not include them along with the current stuff for just the sake of more variation? It does feel that like it could be that simple, doesn't it? You know, there's a few things that could make it feel a lot more varied. It's like on the ice planets, why not add ice sheets? Why not add actual ice caves inside of these biomes as well? You know, I'm just picking on one biome here, but let's face it, out of all the biomes, the frost planets are the ones that I least likely land on to explore because they are all samey. They really are. Go on. Anyways, yeah, 100% agree. And it's like the ringed planets. Why put them in every system? Make them a little bit rarer, and then when you see them, you'll be more inclined to go, oh, I'm going to go and look at that one, see if it's pretty on the surface as well as in space. Or why can't some systems have two ringed planets? Or have a planet that has multiple rings rather than just one set? They could crisscross over like an X, you know? There could be all sorts that they could implement. They could make it a lot crazier. They really could. Around six months before the game's initial release, I made a Reddit post stating this. Oh, cool. All right. Six months before the game's initial release. Here we go. I cannot wait to boot up the game and just walk in any direction, exploring to see what's behind that cliff or what's inside that deep, mysterious cave. I can imagine climbing a mountain during the sunset just to take a break up there, hearing the wind and see how the day slowly turns into night, seeing the blinking stars appear in the night sky, knowing that if I want to, I can get my own spaceship and visit those stars, experience the wonders and feeling of being completely lost somewhere, not knowing what to come next. And you know what? If you listen to this video, he actually gets into that a little bit later on. Where Here we go. I'll just play you this section here. 
take a listen to this. He pretty much says exactly what you just said. Years ago now, the uh, E3 video where you walk down to the watering hole and the antelope run away, this was the piece of key art that kind of influenced that. These are real quick sketches, but all trying to kind of get across the vibe that we wanted to have each time you fly down to new planets. And what this did, it, it gave us targets. It meant we could tweak things like slider values to try, to try to make these kind of events more likely. And you'll see they all, well, a lot of them have this kind of, these landmarks. And we always wanted to have that sense that you fly down, there's always something on the horizon that draws you to it. Rather than just being a dull terrain, there's always something you see that you want to go to. And, uh... Okay, so pretty much everything that people were longing for before release is actually inside of that GDC 2015 sort of stuff. And listen to it. Go watch that video. Uh, it's a great video, but at the same time, it makes you think, well, why? Why did they change direction? It's mental. As of now, I no longer expect the Holy Exploration update to ever arrive. But still, every time Sean posts an emoji, deep down, there's that little explorer in me just hoping. <laughs> how I feel. It's how I feel. It really is. Gilio. On the side note, the game store lets me feel like an explorer from time to time. Yes. And it can, can't be anything else than grateful for Hello Games and their continued work. 100%. So many good memories related to this game. All the joy of the community updates, anticipation, hype, walking in Titan, etc. 100%. And we do this yearly meetup in Guildford, just a stone's throw away from the Hello Games studio. And when you meet the actual people that all play No Man's Sky and you hear them talking about No Man's Sky, I think deep down a lot of them echo that same sort of sentiment. And the Wake in Titan has got so much nostalgia around it. Yeah. They really did a good job of getting this game out there. And the community is freaking awesome. It really is. Golio. Okay, Alice me. Hello, Captain Steve. Well, hello, Alice. As much as I love the game and it's great as it is, I still hasn't reached its full potential. Temporarily forgetting the final part of the ARG, endgame lore, etc. I feel like yourself and a majority of the community that the game needs to deliver its core things. As you mentioned above, the systems, individual planets, but also the centre of the galaxies, biomes, exploration, fauna, flora, oceans, expanded additional climates, scanner overhaul, allowing the scan nearly to everything, not just as big and obvious stuff, more detailed race definition, among other things. Finally, I put it out there that the autophages, when they were introduced to the universe, it was said that the brand new race... So why haven't they got autophage systems, planets, etc.? A small number of Beau Lamb's artwork alludes to it, but nothing. Strange. Yeah, I'm wondering whether they are going to implement some sort of parallel dimension. It's like the Echo Locators brings them into iteration. Could it be that whole planets are going to come into iteration? Whole systems, alternate universes. Are we going to see the planets they're from? And are they from Loop 19? Previous iterations, previous builds. We know Hello Games have still got all that sort of stuff. Are we going to see those gnarly, wormy type terrains? Hmm, maybe. Anyway, here we go. Cheng. Here we go. It's definitely not perfect, but it keeps moving. 100% it does. It really does. Cool. We've got pragmatist music. Every atom is a marketing catchphrase. Nothing more. Yes, there's still in infinite potential here, but there is no game in the world that delivers that much content and replayability for 60 bucks. The biggest feature of the game, having unlimited possibilities, is as big as downside, especially due to the fact that people were used to get in three updates. There's no way Hello Games can finish this game. So I'm happy for every single update, no matter how big it is, since it's already worth 10 times the price. <laughs> It, it really is. Well, I've definitely got my money's worth from it, 100%. However, when it comes to the whole sort of procedural generation to Atom level, when you jump on over to the actual, you know, the fans wiki of exactly what was said and what was alluded to, it is that, you know, every Atom is alluding to it being procedurally generated. And that's how it sits with the actual, you know, there we go. 
Every sun, every galaxy, planet, every blah, 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 blah. This slogan is meant to mean that the whole giant world is procedurally generated and that everything is created, created when you explore it. So as you put boots on the ground, it renders in, everything is generated on the fly, it's all procedurally generated, and that's to every atom level. But I would say that all of these things, because they're not procedural, I would say that they are crafted by the Hello Games studio. I mean, we've seen pretty much every fish. I mean, yes, you've got the head, you've got the body, you've got the fins, but then they're procedurally put together. They're not procedurally generated per se. They're being generated from some sort of pool of parts. A bit like our ships. Apply that to the rocks, apply that... Well, not even the rocks. You can't really apply that to the rocks. They're not really that procedural, you know? So, yeah. It, it, it's not as procedural as what was suggested. I mean... Hello Games even done this whole sort of interview with, um, was it Mulhern? No, not Mulhern. Uh, Colbert. The Colbert show where they actually talked about having their own periodic table. I don't know whether I can play that without getting striked because it's from the Colbert show. But if you click that, you would see it. And it's it's amazing, that, that interview. And you can even see some of the creatures on those planets were the big majestic diplos. And it wasn't just on that E3 planet. There was those majestic diplos, different variants of those majestic diplos on other planets as well. Check that out and watch it with a freaking magnifying glass. The Colbert show, whatever it was. Freaking insane, some of the stuff you see on there. Anyway, yes, that may be true, but I think they simply realised that it was still not possible with the current PC technology. Having animals change the terrain, breaking trees, is just too much to handle. Maybe a lot of the original source code got lost after the studio was flooded. I kind of think that could be the case. But I doubt they could have gone a different route. I'm a developer. Oh, great. There goes my doorbell. One second. Sorry about that. So I'm a developer and I'm still pretty amazing how good the procedural generated terrain works. You cannot see any patterns of terrains being duplicated anywhere. Okay. Yes, you have animals, structures and biomes repeating but they may be more realistic, as we'd imagine. Except for the fact that in reality, most likely 99% of planets would simply not be suitable to land on anyway. I still think Sean had a very complex vision on what he wanted to create during the development and ongoing marketing he promoted his vision. I don't think he lied on purpose, but I think his team realised that it was not possible to fully implement all of this, so chosen a working concept, which was minimal at the time of release, but evolved into a very rich game by now. In fact, the lore of the game is far more richer than in most other games, and they still add more to it. Being 2,000 plus hours into game, I would love to have a game more complexity for long-term players. Yes, of course I would, but I don't need planets with multiple biomes or more different animals. I prefer to have procedurally generated short expeditions with different path options and unique rewards and possibility to create an empire civilization by colonizing full systems. But again, that already may be too much to handle for the existing game engine. I do think Light No Fire will show us No Man's Sky 2 could look like. Anyways, take the game as it is now, and I don't care what Hello Games may have promised 10 years ago, because current state and value of the game is what matters. Any game you pay play for 100 plus hours and pay 60 bucks for is worth its price. Yeah, no, that was never actually part of the argument, you know, whether it's worth its price. It's, you know, should really Hello Games be getting nominated for the most evolved game? And I'd say yes, it has evolved. It's evolved massively. Every single update, they add loads of new stuff in and it does deserve to be up there amongst those nominations. If it wasn't there, I'd be freaking shocked and surprised, put it that way, you know? It's a fantastic game that's been evolving. It's just, has it evolved in the way that Hello Games would like? Or has it evolved in the way that the community would like? And has the community evolved? And what their expectations are evolved? It's like you yourself say so you don't care that they're not delivering on the promise of 10 years ago and you're a day one player. So even then, in the community that I'm saying that I'm speaking for, I'm not speaking for you. And there's probably a lot of people inside of this community that I'm not speaking for. There's probably a lot of people that have let go of those promises and those expectations from the working concept of yesteryear. And perhaps some of that was lost in the flood. I mean, some of what we see, even like in some of that early game footage, you saw a massive crash derelict freighter. Well, the crashed freighters didn't come in until like a visions update. 
So that was long after the freaking trailers come out, but it got delivered eventually. But it was obviously there at one point. So I honestly think that you could be right. Maybe they lost a lot of what was actually developed pre-release somehow, perhaps in that flood. And what we got was like a beta version of it or something that someone had on a flash drive. Who freaking knows what happened? It'd be nice to know what happened. I really hope that when it comes to the 10 year anniversary and Hello Games is quite confident and got light no fire out there, they could actually do some sort of, I don't know, piece to camera where they talk about No Man's Sky as like a video for their 10th anniversary on all the complexities that the studio faced, why they picked to go down the biome route over super biomes, what happened to the super formula. Because even in that Colbert um, interview, look off into the distance and you'll see crazy stuff happening in terrain, massive columns. You see sentinel walkers walking around, just like on their press pack on their website that's still there now. It still shows these crazy terrains, shows loads of sentinels just walking about in the wild, sentinel walkers. What they had when they done the IGN first and then what got delivered at release was just poles apart and honestly think you could be onto something i think they lost a lot in that flood and i think that you know what we got was a massive cat dome version and perhaps a lot of it couldn't be restored who freaking knows and these updates that we're seeing now is slowly bringing some of that loveliness back anyway here we go username exe not found yep of course and it's all been free so before some a bright spark mentions cyberpunk well the, the reason people are going to mention cyberpunk mate is because it's it's actually in the same roster of people that are winning freaking prizes so that's why they're going to mention cyberpunk i guess i don't think someone clicked the link <laughs> uh, moving on cool there we go wait cdpr said that the dlc was for free as an apology for the release they didn't lie again did they <laughs> says chuckles yeah, well, it doesn't. Yeah, but oh god, are all these updates for free? Does Fortnite give their updates for free? They kind of do. It's a free-to-play game, but then they slap in a load of microtransactions, don't they? A little bit like the Genshin Impacty type model as well. But yeah, some studios will charge for that DLC. No Man's Sky and Hello Games hasn't to date, and they keep saying this is another free update. This is another free update. Part of me wonders how long are they going to be free for? Hopefully for the duration, because that's what Sean Murray said that he would like to be able to do. Is it maintainable now that it's on every platform? If they did charge for DLC, would people be happy? Maybe I should do a poll on that one at some stage, people. Or maybe they start funding it a bit like Fortnite or the Genshin Impact model with sort of microtransactions or go the Final Fantasy route where you pay for DLC. There's also optional transactions you can make in game to speed things up or to get a couple of cosmetics. I, I really hope they don't do that. But anyway, I might do a poll on that anyway, just to see how people would feel. Because on one hand, it's going to support the studio. If it supports the studio and they can grow a bigger team, then that means bigger, bigger involvements to the game. Yeah, that could be another poll coming soon, people. Keep an eye out. My guess. Anyways, let's scroll on down. So we've got this guy here, Eric Anderson. I love the game, but I see his lack of appeal to people. Combat and story are lacking with trillions of galaxies. There's not much variety. Still, I spent a good 500 hours in the game. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I think the reason that people can spend so much time in the game is there is still so much to do in the game. Like building out your, your, your perfect ship fleet, getting your capital freighter the way that you want it, finding that perfect planet to call home, building a load of bases, hooking up with your mates, running some missions... There is no other game like it, not for me anyway, people. I know some people will say that, you know, Sea of Thieves and other games come close, but they do just come close. Still not a patch on this. Not another, I think, anyway. Okay, we've got Straw Whacka Kaka Munga Frog. Okay, sorry for completely butchering your name there, but I can't read that. I still, it still needs some work, but it has evolved more than others, so I don't know. Well, nice of you to chime in, but yeah. It's, yeah, it's a bit of an oddity, isn't it? I kind of, yeah, you know, I echoed that sentiment at the top. Yeah, I went into more depth, but there we go. Coolio. Okay, so Austin Air Co. So as compared to what? What other game has set the standard that is still playable more than eight years later? And there's Minecraft for one, maybe? You know, that's definitely one. <laughs> 
Um, well, Neat Dangerous was, until, you know, that went sort of like tits up. There are rare things in-game, but they're only rare because you've got to look for them. How do you make something rare in-game with 18 quintillion planets? Then people complain nothing is rare, because what is rare on the 100 millionth planet galaxy they've never been to, because in order to be rare, it cannot occur that often. Being rare is self-defeating, and in itself, if all you do is say this, this is a rock, I've seen hundreds of rocks already, there's a tree, big whoop, I've seen hundreds of thousands of trees. You see where I'm going, hopefully. Not to say the game is 100% perfect, after all, I play on Xbox One, so there's that. Okie mm -hmm. I don't know where you go with that, really. I mean, to be fair, it's quite easy to make things rare. I mean, when it first started out at launch, there was a lot of things that were rare. Finding a Diplo was like freaking finding gold. It was, it was amazing when you come across it. In fact, look at rare minerals on our own planet and finding them. You know, it. there are things that are rare. It's like I'm not going to find a kangaroo in frickin' England, am I? So if you could make it, so, well, you can probably can in a zoo, but you know what I mean. You know, there could be areas that are going to have rarities. Uh, saying that it, you know, no, it's, anyway, I think I've made my point. Cool. Chuckles, 9767. I don't play it, but I've asked people what GTA Online has done to earn 9 billion over the last decade. So that's another game that's been going on for some time, and Red Dead and stuff like that. And even Destiny. There's a lot of games that have lasted 10 years. Warframe is getting close to that. The answers are things like racetracks, new heists, occasional story drops, new skins and cosmetics, etc. The core game is still the same. There's not really been big overhauls to gameplay mechanics or anything well not since next no i don't play many others but as forever comp and comparisons minecraft fortnite wow yeah see there's quite a few to be fair you know, final fantasy online it'd be fascinating to see what other games have truly done i'd be interested in a video on that says so chuckles well i could do a video on other games that have lasted 10 years but um to be honest I think people can do their own sort of like little deep dive into that. And there's probably other people that have played games for a long period of time. I imagine Sea of Thieves is getting close to that, you know. Who freaking knows? Anyway, uh, I digress. Anyhow, let's jump back on over. Well, there we go, people. I honestly felt like that was a pretty good little discussion. That. Now, I'm going to be uploading all of these as some sort of podcast because I think people could quite easily listen to this without having to also read. And, uh, yeah, I know it's not the most exciting of videos because there's not a lot of video going on, but at the same time, I really get a lot out of these. It brings me closer to my community, I think. It helps me keep my finger on the pulse on what people are thinking or what people would like. I mean, not a lot of... I mean, there were a few comments there that I'm like, hmm, I don't know whether I agree with that, but at the same time, it's still their opinion and it, it's still very valid. And it does make me think, you know, there is so much that No Man's Sky is already delivering upon. And is it a case that, you know, you're never going to be happy in a procedurally large universe? There is always going to be untapped potential. There really is. It must be very difficult for Hello Games to implement things without upsetting a massive swathe of the community. Get it wrong and you risk losing that sort of lovely review that they've built up on Steam. And it could end up at easily becoming the next Elite Dangerous, couldn't it? Or overhyping something, then undelivering again, and you run the risk of becoming the next Bethesda's Star Starfield. You know, at least what Hello Games done when they underdelivered and overhyped is they delivered year and year and year, or season to season to season with their updates. Not any other studio would do that. You know, this is definitely a work of passion for Hello Games and their studio. And it's such a small team, and they're so devoted to their community in the game that you have to respect that. No matter how you feel about some of the updates and whether it's not really progressed the actual gameplay forwards, I feel what they're doing is putting in more foundations, putting in that skeleton that they can then build upon. I honestly think this year is going to be a large year for No Man's Sky, whether it's still building that skeleton and putting together that foundation, or whether it's actually putting meat on the bones is yet to be seen. 
but I am still excited for the rest of this year, and I'm still excited for the rest of whatever Hello Games is working on next, and Light No Fire is tantalising those taste buds, and I want some more. I really do, and I hope we see more in this year's Game Awards. The fact that Hello Games has been nominated, and there is a good chance that Shaun of the Murrays or somebody from their actual team could be standing on that stage again inside of the Game Awards to go and pick up their award and maybe even tell us more about what's to come for No Man's Sky or Like No Fire has seriously excited me. The fact that they are nominated excites me massively and for that nomination people thank you very much for nominating them and as soon as the voting opens please cast your vote for No Man's Sky and the Hello Game Studio because I feel that they thoroughly deserve it and I hope you're with me on that. And yeah, that's pretty much everything I've got for you out there in the viewerverse in this episode. Till next time, goodbye, goodbye and goodbye again.